incorporating hip hop elements such as beatboxing, MCing, spoken word, and turntablism with Afro indigenous Colombian musica de gaita, champeta, and modern cumbia, Benny Esguerra and New Tradition Music follow up on their Juno nominated A New Tradition Volume 2, Return of the Queasy, with Northside Queasy. The new volume delivers an urgent call for justice, environmental healing, and respect for ancestors and land treaties. I'm Juana of Lula World Records, and this is part one of three of the making of Northside Queasy A New Tradition Volume 3, Benny Guerra and New Tradition Music's new release. Ruben Benies Guerra is also an award-winning arts educator, community worker, and PhD candidate in musicology and ethnomusicology, specializing in traditional Colombian music and hip-hop culture. Recipient of the 2020 Ontario Arts Foundation's Arts Educator Award, he is currently the music director of several community music education programs based in Toronto's Jane and Finch. He describes the original compositions in the most recent album as Afro-Indigenous Colombian music from a conscious inner city perspective. Benny Guerra begins the interview by telling us about the Afro-Indigenous roots of the music at the core of his latest album, Northside Queasy A New Tradition Volume 3. Yes, this is the Queasy right here. This is the indigenous instrument from the world's tallest coastal mountain, which is the Sierra Nevada in present day Colombia. And it's the instrument that keeps the main melodies in the album. It's all influenced by, by the melodies in this instrument, every composition. And this instrument is ancient since time immemorial. Uh, it's made out of charcoal and wax. The mouthpiece is originally, traditionally, the quill of a duck's feather and the body is made out of a cactus. Uh, up in the Sierra Nevada, there are five indigenous nations that have played this instrument for a long time. Uh, the Kogi, Ika, Wiwa, Kankwamu, Arawako. And archaeologists have found instruments like these um, as far up as Mexico or the land that we know today as Mexico. Uh, one of the oldest ones found is 2,000 years old, over 2,000 years old. Um, and it's also, it works uh, with the harmonic sequence. So there is uh, first an octave between the first and the second note when you blow. And I had all my fingers down on the same orifice. So you could keep progressively doing that and that's how the harmonic series works. Many instruments, wind instruments work uh, using the harmonic series. And the interesting thing is that the harmonic series is the basics or it, it has the basis of the of geometric uh, figures uh, from sacred geometry. So figures like the seed, the fruit, the flower of life, um, the 64 strands of DNA, uh, the Ankh from ancient Kemet, and so many other different geometric shapes. Um, this series forms the basis of all those, all those different shapes. So that's one interesting fact about it. And many people uh, believe that this sequence um, holds the key to a unified equation of the universe. Um, this, this one is the Kwisi Bunsi, which means female flute, and it's played along with the Kwisi Sigi, which is the male flute. And the Kwisi Sigi plays the Tani. The Kwisi Sigi only has uh, two orifices, so whoever's playing it can play the Tani, also known as the Maraca. Benny has been performing and researching the music of Colombia for a long time and conducted a major research project on the tambor alegre, an Afro-Colombian instrument with origins in West and Central Africa. This is the tambor alegre right here. And um, it comes from the palenques, which are the communities that were set up by people who fled the sites of slavery. Um, you know, during colonization, they set up their own free communities. 
known as palenques you know in places like brazil they're known as quilombos in the caribbean or the british islands they're known as maroon communities um, and that's where this instrument comes from but the origins are central africa so instruments like these with the same materials such as the wedges the i guess uh, it's called the girdle that you do with rope and then the zigzag shaped rope with hoops um, these type of instruments are found all throughout Central Africa, so as far down as uh, southern Nigeria, all the way up, you know, Central uh, African Republic, the Congo, and even Senegal. Um, it, and that's a principal instrument uh, that the lead drummer plays, which follows what the dancers are doing and also is always improvising and lively, uh, making the, the, the music lively. That's why it's called the tambor alegre, which means the lively drum. The original works in the album incorporate the traditional Afro-Indigenous Colombian instrumentation with other instruments and musical ideas. Here, Benny breaks down how all of these elements come together in his compositions, which he describes as Afro-Indigenous Colombian music from a conscious inner city perspective. These instruments, the indigenous flutes, the tani, and the drums came together in the 16th century. So it's not something that was recently put together. It's something that developed throughout many years of you know, uh, sharing and uh, cross-cultural understanding, cross-cultural exchange. Um, so that is the, the ensemble that we know now as Musica de Gaita, which is you know, hundreds of years old already together. So this is the tradition that I study. I grew up uh, being a participant and a member of hip hop without even knowing hip hop culture when I was, since when I was a kid, uh, breaking or break dancing. Um, and then later I, I became exposed to other artistic elements that are part of hip hop culture, um, such as beatboxing and then emceeing. Um, so it's always been important for me to add those elements into the music. So the turntables are a huge part of uh, the songs in Northside Queasy. Also the, the MPC beatbox is very important part and the human beatboxing as well as the spoken word and emceeing. Um, the music is, I see it as being from an inner city perspective. Well first because I was born in Bacata, which is traditional Muisca territory, also known as Bogota, the capital city of Colombia, in a barrio called Policarpa, which is right in the middle of the city, and it was established by landless peasants, indigenous, mestizo, mainly women, uh, established this, uh, people who were displaced by war, established this neighborhood. And my grandmother being one of those first original uh, people, as also with my, uh, with my aunt. And they were one of the first people to establish uh, this neighborhood, which was uh, a long struggle of resistance, even armed resistance, where they uh, took over land uh, that wasn't being used and set up their tents and intercepted pipes that, from a nearby hospital uh, to get access to water. Um, till eventually the, the mayor had to declare it a legitimate uh, neighborhood. This is the Barrio Policarpa. So, that, so I was, this is part of my, my um, I guess, legacy and my upbringing. Uh, many artists and activists came out of this neighborhood, uh, including my parents, a cousin of mine, uh, who's, uh, his name is Diego Marulanda, also a very well-known musician here in Toronto. Um, I started playing with his band Pacande, which also got a Juno nomination in the 90s. Um, but also coming up in Toronto, working and living in Jane and Finch, I've been influenced by uh, the inner city and all the sounds from the inner city. So that is the perspective that I'm approaching this music with. Benny closes the interview by sharing why these instruments and traditions are important to him because they're symbols of resistance, they're symbols of resilience. Um, the fact that they're still here, they've survived colonization, slavery, modernization, civil wars, and they're still here, they're still being played. These are, these are traditions that are never gonna go away. Um, and that's why they're important to me. 
not in the sense that I perform them because they're, they're traditions and instruments that should be rescued. Many people see it that way, but I see it the opposite. I see it as these instruments rescued me. Um, they allowed me to learn a lot about myself through through the music, through the instruments, and and I, also I've seen that happen with many other people. Uh, similarly, the the elements of hip hop. Hip hop culture is a culture that came out of the rubble, basically in the 70s in the Bronx, New York. Um, so the artistic elements of hip hop as well um, are symbols of cultural resistance and cultural resilience. And that's why, you know, these instruments and these traditions are important for me. Look out for part two of The Making of Northside Cuisi, a new tradition volume three with Benny Esguerra and New Tradition Music, where we will be exploring the Condor and Eagle prophecy and how it has influenced the works, collaborations and concepts behind the album. This is Juana with Lula World Records. For more information, you can find us at lulaworldrecords.ca and newtraditionmusic.com. <laughs>